Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and today we're going to go over the top 10 worst mucus forming foods according to the mucus free community. So this list is based on a poll that was ran in the Professor Arnold Eret Mucusless Diet Healing System Facebook support group. And I just ask everybody, what is the worst mucus forming food or food combination in your opinion? And this is the result. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the channel leave a kind, gentle, and constructive comment down below. <laughs> yeah, right. And hit that like button so that the YouTube algorithm will show us a little bit of love and hopefully share our video with more than five people. And as always, please share this video on your own social media so that we can get this message out as far and wide as possible. And number 10 is, uh, drum roll please, I guess out of work. White bread. Good old demineralized, denaturalized white bread. Many people ask, well, how do you know if something is or is not mucus forming? So sometimes I use white bread as an example. If you take a piece of white bread, submerge it into water, let it sit there for about three or four hours, come back to it, and see if you want to just grab it and put it in your mouth and eat it. It's slimy, it's kind of nasty, it's soggy. Oh, it's bread juice. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I love bread. I don't like this bread. After the initial squish and all the bread water fills your mouth. What does that do inside the body? Now some people argue, well, it's gonna your digestive system and juices take care of it not all of it and so there's this mucusy slimy residue that's left over in your GI tract when you eat mucus forming foods when we're talking about mucus forming foods we're not talking about foods that merely create a response from your mucus membrane where you secrete mucus and blow your nose or cough up some phlegm or something like that it's not what we're talking about we're talking about foods that fundamentally degrade into slimy substances. And inside the body, when too much of this stuff backs up, you have all this slime producing, slimy residue. The average person is gonna say, no, this slimy slop is not something that's really appealing to me anymore. After the initial squish and all the bread water fills your mouth. To do the same thing with say grapes you could even crush the grapes up a little bit submerge them in the water and let them sit there for a long time do those grapes turn into a slimy scary kind of nasty substance you will try the same thing with apple or blackberries or some kind of fruit does that fruit degrade into a slimy kind of nasty mess no generally if it's a mucus free food it doesn't do that. But when you look at the history of white bread, there has been a lot of propaganda that has been put out in the media where people think that it is healthy. Again, with energy building Sunbeam bread, the favorite bread of Hopalong Cassidy. Thanks, Hoppy, for telling me about your favorite bread, Sunbeam. Yes, mothers, reach for Hoppy's favorite bread. Reach for Sunbeam, the bread you need for energy. Wonder asks, how big do you want to be? Bigger than George, he's my dog. She'll never need Wonder Bread more than right now, because the time to grow bigger and stronger is during the Wonder Years, ages 1 through 12. The years when your child grows to 90% of her adult height. How can you help? By serving nutritious, wonder-enriched bread. Wonder helps build strong bodies 12 ways. So mucus forming foods are ones that degrade into slime and white bread does a wonderful job of turning into slime. Number nine, we have mollusks, clams, oysters, snails, all of that good stuff. Clams, oysters, mussels, snails, etc. are pus and mucus forming. 
We define pus-forming foods as foods that come from an animal, rotting flesh, decays down into this very putrid kind of concentrated form of mucus that we call pus. So when we say pus and mucus, pus forming foods are always mucus forming foods, but not all mucus forming foods are also pus forming foods. Clams and oysters and mollusks and these are most definitely concentrated forms of mucus, very hard to eliminate from the body causes all kinds of long-term chronic issues when eaten over and over again. And now I know a lot of people say, well, my parents ate it or a certain type of people eat this food all the time and they're considered to be real healthy. The problem is th those are myths. Those are these things that we tell ourselves to make us feel better about being addicted and eating some of these things or it's part of a heritage and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, we got to be objective and we just have to understand that regardless of if you eat these things or not, there's mucus forming. And that's why this one is number nine on the list. Oh, and, and be careful not to get that in your eye. Number eight, we have fish, cooked fish to be exact, all kinds of fish. Now the question is, why do we consider fish to be the worst kind of meat that you can eat? I'll wait. Precisely it, you, you are so smart. Most people understand when you breathe, it's a cleansing process. You breathe the oxygen in, exhale carbon dioxide. There is this cleansing process that happens every time you breathe. Now when you have animals that do not breathe oxygen with lungs, the concentration of the filth in their organism is uh, it's, it's kind of nasty. Fish come out of the water before they die. They already don't smell good to us. Most people, don't really like fishy type of smell and then let the thing sit for a long, for a while why do we have a natural aversion to dead raw fish fish smells like fish like that when something smells like fish that usually means that it does not smell good Fishy smell is not good. And fish is another pus forming item that degrades is very concentrated form of mucus and it is incredibly stimulating. What people would call health and strength is really stimulation and in the long term, in terms of illness, there's a price to be paid for this overstimulation using these unnatural foods to stimulate the body. But how about a bit of deep frying and breading? So you start to add these other elements, the way that fish is often cooked, and you have a recipe for pus taster. Ha <laughs> ha, that was lame. Number seven, we have your favorite and mine, potato chips. So why might potato chips, which are sometimes usually vegan depending unless they use some kind of weird oil on it why would potato chips be on this list besides being really starchy and obviously mucus forming and not eliminating really well from the body they're very very addictive they usually come with salt some kind of oils involved and as the saying goes, you can't just eat one. Well, what is the saying? I, I bet you can't. I bet you can't eat just one. I bet you can't eat just one. Whatever it is. I love these chips. Please. Bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> that is something to consider because you can have items that might not necessarily cause as much mucus as another item but if that particular item is really addictive 
then it's just as bad or if not worse than some mucus forming items that might even objectively be worse and objectively cause more mucus. Potato chips, very starchy, does not eliminate well, and that's why it's number seven on our list. Number six, scrambled cheesy eggs. Mm -mm. Where do I begin with this one? So first and foremost, Professor Arnold Eret lists eggs as being one of the worst things you can eat, and especially cooked egg. It's incredibly slimy, doesn't eliminate very well at all. And I know that a lot of people still eat it, and it's a central part of a lot of folks' meals. To eat this first thing in the morning is one of the most idiotic things that anyone could ever try to do. Just saying. So the glue-like sticky property, and then you cook it, this kind of coagulated, yeah, this, this does not eliminate well. But then all of a sudden you throw in a little bit of cheese, which in itself is terrible enough to be on this list in its own little slot. But you throw cheese on top of the scrambled eggs, you mix it together, and you have yourself a recipe for chronic constipation. Number five, hot dog with chili and cheese. An all American classic, the hot dog, throw a little bit of chili on there, a little bit of cheese. Now full disclosure, this was one of my favorite food items before I started practicing the Mucus's diet healing system. I could inhale several hot dogs with chili and cheese like it was nothing. And I'm talking about Gold Star, N none of that Skyline mess. Gold Star. I used to also get these footlongs from a spot called a root beer stand where I grew up at. Now I get two footlongs with chili cheese, a cheeseburger, a root beer, a root beer floating popcorn, and that's one meal. And I would eat that either at least once a week, if not a couple times a week when they were open. And I say this so that you understand the purpose of this video isn't to degrade anybody or shame anybody for eating any of these things because I myself used to eat almost all of these things besides clams and oyster. I didn't eat, I didn't eat that kind of stuff. But all this other stuff, I pretty much ate all this. If you know about the mucus diet healing system, you know that it's about a transitional methodology. We're not telling anybody to just give up all your favorite foods overnight. There is a method and a system to the sanity. See what I did there? Usually people say there's a method to the madness. Well here there's a method to the sanity. First you have the white bread bun. We already talked about white bread. Then you have the illustrious hot dog. What's in the hot dog, people ask. Nobody really knows. Then you have the chili, and if you are familiar with so-called Cincinnati-style chili, I'm from Cincinnati, it's more like a gravy, a chunky meat gravy. They call it chili. You put all that together, you might throw on a few onions and and there you go you got a as we would maybe also call it a cheese coney snoop what you got to say about this Ooh, what is that boo boo what is it oh uh beef jerky oh hot dogs this is a hot dog oh cuz i ain't never eaten a hot dog cuz every time i see a barbecue with a plate with a hot dog on it i'm knocking that out his hands if that's how they make hot dogs, I don't want one. I'm good. Number four, store-bought cow's milk. Or just cow's milk. Pasteurized, homogenized, mucus-forming royalty. Does it say Super Starlax now homogenized smooth? Homogenized smooth. That's right. Homogenized smooth. It's one of the items that most people if you've never read the Mucus of Diet Healing System book or heard of Mucus Free Living, that's one of the things that most people will know causes mucus. This stuff is ridiculous. Why do humans drink this? This is not for, meant for humans. It's not that humans 
are lactose intolerant is that humans were not supposed to consume the milk of another animal and after the age of two humans lose the ability to digest lactose anyway so this has just been a propaganda job milk industry has done a beautiful job of just convincing you that you drink this mess and everything all your problems are solved you can grow up got milk strong healthy bones michael jordan with the milk mustache whatever they, they got all the celebrities on board and they just made you feel so comfortable drinking this slimy stuff that just causes so much havoc in the body it doesn't do a body good and please please if you're sick and you continue to drink milk do not complain to me or anybody else that you're still blowing your nose you're still coughing up phlegm and looking to the heavens why am I still sick why is it taking me so long to heal my question to you is why are you still drinking milk number three another one of my favorites from the old growing up days we have the American classic pizza. Give me pizza. P I Z Z A. Oh, I could get a large double pepperoni, bacon, extra cheese, pizza, eat that whole thing myself. Maybe dr drizzle in a little bit of that garlic butter, some seasonings or something extra. Mmm. Ah. I, I could kill one of those and I did on a regular basis. I was definitely a pizza head. No judgment here from me when you're coming from the standard American diet or the standard, you know what, I'm gonna invent something right now. The standard anywhere diet. There's a lot of folks here that eat terrible anywhere around the world. And so instead of just saying the standard American diet, as most people do, why don't we call it the standard anywhere diet? Trademark Professor Spira. <laughs> okay, so I know that pizza can be made in vegan ways and with different kinds of ingredients. I'm talking about the most common pizza pies, pus pies that folks eat on a regular basis. So first and foremost, we gotta start from the bottom up and you gotta have your dough. And depending on what type of dough you got, your thick crust, your regular crust, your thin crust, all these different kinds of crust. But oftentimes it's gonna be partially cooked by the time it's done cooking. It's partially cooked dough. Then on top of that, you put the little layer of some really acidic reconstituted tomato sauce and on top of that now you got to throw your cheese on there get you some mo mozzarella cheese going on and if you're like me and you ask for double cheese then you get the double going i mean what kind who wants to have pizza without pepperoni i mean come on now put that pepperoni on there get the pepperoni on some people deal with the sausage i was never really a big sausage person but i would put bacon on there the double pepperoni bacon and sometimes folks will try to put different kinds of vegetables on it'll have some onions and green peppers banana peppers that kind of stuff obviously the worst part of this whole thing is that combination of partially cooked dough mixing with the cheese mixing with this acidic layer of tomato sauce and whatever meat topping you got on top so now you got like I say, a pus pie, you have something that is going to be incredibly hard to eliminate and people wonder why they have chronic illnesses later in life, but nobody should wonder why we have these ailments when this is a standard way to eat. And you know, the box used to save real cheese on it, like that was some kind of big deal, like, oh, this pizza has real cheese so it's it's better people have this concept of, of superfoods we should have a concept of stroke foods this is a stroke and heart attack food number two we have milkshakes slash ice cream so we just kind of 
put these two together because we're all we're talking about frozen or chilled pus Ice cream! milk pus pus milk either way you slice it this is not something that is really good for you or is going to eliminate well can you believe that chilled cow pus is something that is going to not be good for you i know it's a prize but it is what it is so this stuff will stop you up something proper even people that know nothing about the mucus diet will understand that ice cream and milkshakes are going to cause or produce some kind of mucus and this one actually does in addition to leaving behind its own slime residue often will create a response of the mucus membrane where you start to blow your nose or cough up mucus or whatever at least that was my personal experience and the experience of a lot of other people that i've talked to and we just got it restocked with the ice cream uh, right for easter sunday but i don't know what i would have done if ice cream were not invented i don't know who i am without it <laughs> and of course people don't usually just have it by itself <laughs> there you can throw all kinds of toppings on it and blend other things into it. I myself was a huge, huge proponent and fan before practicing Mucus's diet of the hot fudge sundae. So I'd have the ice cream with this warm and gooey hot fudge on top and you throw this little fake cherry on it and some sprinkles and nuts and you're just eating it and you got this warm and this cold just going down your throat. And, uh, and then you start coughing up mucus and you're blowing your nose for the next couple days. And if I forget to take my lactate, I'd be hunched over in the corner somewhere, just, just go, just going through it. Did I mention that humans can't even digest lactose after two years old? Honorable mentions, we have sushi, raw eggs, white rice, french fries, french fries made from white potatoes particularly, chicken sandwich, breakfast cereal with homogenized and pasteurized cow's milk, cake, corn chips, and grilled cheese, bacon, and peanut butter sandwich. I just made that up, the peanut butter. I'm sure somebody has done that and it was nasty. And what you've all been waiting for, number one. A drum roll, please. The all-American bacon cheeseburger. Perhaps this is the mother of all pus and mucus forming food combinations. First, we have the white bread bun, and then we have a beef patty. And if that's not enough meat, throw on some bacon. Why not? Boy, boy, boy. No, 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 no. It's bacon! And then we have melted cheese on top of the bacon, on top of the pus patty, on top of the white bread bun. And then for a laugh, perhaps we'll put, I don't know, a piece of iceberg lettuce on it. You know, because healthy. And then we have a smorgasbord of condiments. We have our egg-based mayonnaise. We have our vinegar-infused ketchup and mustard. And some folks come over thinking they're hot stuff with their hot sauce, and someone else might throw a little barbecue sauce on there, or think they're real hip with some relish or something like that, or some horseradish sauce, or who knows, whatever they are throwing on there. It's one of those things that I used to eat Constantly, this, so this was at least maybe 25% of my diet. So I had pizza, hot dog, chili cheese, bacon cheeseburgers. That was most of my diet. The only thing not on this list that I would add to that would be spaghetti. Uh, spaghetti and tomato sauce, I used to crush that. So if you want premature aging and to increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, erectile dysfunction, respiratory infection, intestinal worms, and much, much more, then enjoy you some good old bacon cheeseburger. But if you like life, avoid bacon cheeseburgers like the plague. 
So that's it. That's our list. I want to thank everybody that participated. This was a lot of fun. You know, I'm trying to find ways to get the community more involved. We're having the weekly meetups going on now, We're trying to do some of these polls. Just it's fun to create new things and to plug in with each other and just enjoy life. So I thank you so much for uh, participating. I thank you so much for watching. Again, please give this video a like so that YouTube algorithms will pick us up a little bit. Uh, subscribe to make sure that you can get these videos as soon as they come out. And for more information about how to transition off of mucus forming foods and the beauty of a mucus free lifestyle, check out Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus's Diet Healing System, annotated, revised, and edited by yours truly, Professor Spira. And tell a friend to tell a friend that mucus free is the way to be. Until next time, peace, love, and breath. Oh, and, and be careful not to get that in your eye. Pass the mucus, pass the mucus right here. <laughs> <laughs>